I was born with Asperger's Syndrome. Back when I was a kid, I had too many problems of not being able to read at my proper level, reading too far ahead, and the schools would not let me go and get ahead as far as I needed to. So finally, my father took me on a sailing trip around the world. I learned a shitload about other cultures, read a, uh, read a bunch on long ocean trips, and started to make some tangential connections between a wide range of subjects. When I came back, I attended four years of private school, got an interesting religious education which taught me some rules of debate and consultation. When I attended university, I attempted to start a political science background, but realizing that there was a lack of critical thinking, I switched over to hard science. Now I am a hard science student and an amateur magician, continuing on to learn hopefully everything at some level enough to make me the expert layman. You are watching The Expert Layman. I am the practitioner, or better known as The Expert Layman, and welcome to the show. Uh, if you have not watched uh, episode one of The Expert Layman, at this point, I would recommend you now stop watching this episode, go back, watch the first episode, and then come back and reload this episode so you can continue on. To the uh, people who, uh, for last week's um, question at the end of the episode pertaining to the uh, creationist versus evolution argument, um, technically, there were four fallacies. Um, however, if you had put down, uh, uh, if you put down anywhere underneath, um, ad hominem attacks or attacking the person, appeal to popularity, where I said 90% of people believe evolution to be true, uh, slippery slope argument, where I said that um, if uh, you didn't believe in uh, in evolution, you soon you'd have to reject physical science, assume gravity didn't work, and uh, false dilemma. Uh, saying in relation to religion that you are either a creationist or an evolutionary believer. Technically, these are not the, uh, you know, you're either a religious person or, or an evolutionist. Technically, that isn't quite true. There is actually a combination of both. Anyway, um, the next critical thinking fallacy that we are doing for episode two today is appeal to ignorance. Because something is not known to be true, it is assumed to be false. Um, hmm. To think of an example for this, um, certain falsifiable claims, um, of course, presumably the same way could all, presumably the same also goes the other direction too, because something is not known to be false, it is assumed to be true. Um, let's see. Um, I believe that one uh, perfect example of this was an article, uh, or more specifically an editorial I read back in the Times Colonist a while ago, um, in response to the uh, popular mechanics issue, which said that uh, a killer asteroid might be uh, headed on its way to Earth. Somebody said, killer asteroids should be the new contestant against um, contenders against, um, uh, as well as global warming is the next major world threat. Uh, you know, and, uh, and hype on everyone's minds. After all, the science in both is uncertain, dot, dot, dot. Now, there is a problem with this, about this appeal to ignorance, because first things first, um, people assume that if uh, science is not 100% true, it is therefore false. Science in and of itself is inherently uncertain. There is a certain amount of uh, uncertainty. There is a, uh, a factor known as error bars. This gives a certain degree of um, pro you know of, of error depending on how much they know precisely. Well, whatever data it is, they know. There is also a um, you know there is also a process called peer review, which double checks all the data. So basically, the higher accuracy or the higher the more the higher the likelihood, the most likely theory 
of, uh, of any one particular uh, theory of the number of contending theories out there to fit the data is the one that peer-reviewed journals, uh, peer -reviewed, uh, journals generally most publish because that's the one which has the most uh, hard science behind it, the most sound um, scientific protocols, etc. So, um, but that's for another time, um, you know, so that, that, anyway, that would be where this appeal to ignorance comes in, that because uh, global warming or killer asteroids are not 100% true, that therefore they must be false. Um, actually, that kind of leads back into another something else called the call for perfection at a later date, but um, you'll be getting that near the end of the first season. So, let's go to the streets and see what people, uh, see if people recognize the appeal to ignorance fallacy. Automatically, is this magic or is this mechanism to it? Season one. Please don't touch. Right now, basically, what I'm doing is every week I'm doing a new critical thinking fallacy. I've like basically 35 thousand. He just made his own blooper, and I'm willing to make them too, but at least now you've got an example. I hope you enjoyed that particular clip of uh, embarrassing an English professor. Um, basically what I was doing there was I was telling him hypothetically, if I had performed that same rope trick, um, making the rope go stiff in front of, um, you know, using a rope provi provided to me under the most strictest of scientific conditions, provided by none other than the amazing Randy himself, head of the $1 million challenge, would the man still believe it? He said no, it would still be a trick. At which point I told him that he uh, had been hit, uh, surprised on hit the camera, that he committed the appeal to ignorance fallacy, and um, then he said that he actually taught this, uh, he actually taught this in, in university. So, um, yeah, sort of a uh, English professor getting caught by his own blooper. I hope you enjoyed that, and hopefully that provided you a good example um, of not only the appeal to ignorance fallacy, but another point, that even though we claim to be critical thinkers, we still must watch our own what we say and what we do for fear that we fall into the same critical thinking fallacies and lapses that uh, those who don't, who are irrational, do as well. So, my argument for this week will be as follows. All people convicted by the law should go to jail because only guilty people are ever tried. That, um, if you can recognize the critical thinking fallacy I used in that particular, right, uh, in that particular uh, argument right there, um, please put it below, uh, down here on YouTube, uh, just put it in the comments, and um, if you've gotten it right, uh, you've got a chance to come on the next show, um, or on one of the episodes coming up in the future. Um, again, remember, nobody's answered yet, so um, like I said, you answer one of these right, feel free to come on the show. Okay, thank you for watching this week's episode of The Expert Layman. Next week is, our, is another critical thinking fallacy for you. Toodles.